The Friday Footy Show is proudly brought to you by Towards Zero for the 2019-20 TIO NTFL season. This week, we're linking up with No More to work together towards ending domestic, family and sexual violence. Stay tuned for what we've got in store. Men's Premier League action starts tonight when the Darwin Buffaloes and Waratah meet at 7pm at TIO Stadium. The Buffaloes can jump back up to third with a victory, but a loss could see them finish the round in fifth. On Saturday, Southern Districts come up against the Magpies. Can the Crocs find their form before finals? While over at Nightcliffe, will the Tigers' domination continue against Wanderers? Closing off the round is the big game between the Teeley Bombers and St Mary's. It's sure to be exciting if the last two encounters between these sides are anything to go off. But a loss for the Bombers would see them jumped if the Buffs win tonight. The women's action also heats up on Saturday with a battle of second versus first. There was only one point between it when the two teams last met, so can the Darwin Buffets get one over Waratah? Get down to the footy to support your team or tune in live across our channels. Congratulations to Jonathan Miles who will notch up men's Premier League game 100 tomorrow. Miles is a dual Premiership player, having rucked with Nightcliff and Wanderers in winning grand finals. So it's fitting he'll reach his milestone when these two teams play. Speaking of Nightcliff, last night No More's Mark Motlop went down to training to speak to the club about family violence and playing footy the right way. We caught up with him to hear why we need to change the way the public views family violence. Oh, look, uh, I think just the, the current trend, the way that domestic violence has really, really um, you know, come to the fore not in just in sport, but in general life itself. So we're just trying to get the message across, you know, the DV Domestic Violence Awareness Program to get it out there and let people know that, you know, domestic violence is part and parcel of, of our life and we don't need it in there. We need to get rid of it. And uh, this is just about making this round, the No More Round is about making people aware that domestic violence needs to be shut down. Look, all clubs now have signed a, a domestic violence action plan. It's part of the... Um, um, licensing agreement with the NT, AFLNT. So we're talking to them tonight. They, they've been the trendsetters in uh, in terms of the domestic violence action plan. Look, if people aren't aware of it, there's you know almost 500,000. That's half a million people are affected by domestic violence every, on every weekend, any given day. And uh, you know we just there's stats that we don't need in Australia. So to bring that, those stats down, we need to make people aware that domestic violence is rife in our community. You know, one woman dies every week, 52 weeks of the year. So, you know, it's almost 60 people, 60 ladies die every year. So we want to try to bring that number down. But just more so that domestic violence plays no, no part in sport. And if you've got, a, got sport, 8 million people are, are involved in sport in any given day and in any given weekend. What a perfect army to mobilise the troops for the domestic violence campaign. You know, you play the game as hard as you want, but, mate, don't go out there to hurt people. Don't go out there to maim people. Play it in the true spirit of the game. In addition to some fundraising efforts the Tigers will run at their home games, there's a few other things going on at TIO Stadium. Fans will notice a big stencil on the ground to remind us all that there were 100 deaths last year at the hands of family and domestic violence. 100 is too many. Players and officials have been invited to wear orange armbands as a sign of their commitment to end family violence. The umpires will wear orange socks for the same reason. At the end of the game, the coaches will decide on a Spirit of the Game medal, which they'll award to a player of the opposition who they deem to have participated in the best spirit and with the greatest respect for the game, their opponents, their own team and the umpires. And lastly, our TV commentators are going to think about the language they use to call the games, as often violent words are used in a sporting context. We can all do our part to reduce violence. Don't remain silent. Understand how your own attitudes and actions may support attitudes of violence and offer help and support if you suspect someone close to you is being abused. For more information and resources, visit www.nomore.org.au. As of 11am today, footy ops have received one forfeit in the under-18 boys, with the Darwin Buffaloes forfeiting to the Big River Hawks. On a different note, we wish some of the NTFL and CAFL players all the best this weekend when the 2020 NAB AFL Women's Competition gets underway. Congratulations to Geordie Hickey, who is making her AFLW debut for the Gold Coast Suns when it plays the first ever game against GWS tomorrow. She won't be alone, though, with Jazz Hewitt and Sally Riley lining up beside her. A little later tomorrow, our trio of Crows Premiership stars will come up against the Brisbane Lions. Good luck to all of them. We're seeking nominations for life members. 
There are three categories, honorary, player and umpire, and all the details and selection criteria can be viewed on the AFLNT website. Be sure to get your nominations into Felicity at the email address on your screen by next Wednesday, the 12th of February, so that the information can be supplied to the board to discuss at the AGM later this month. Switching back to NTFL, and earlier this week, the standings for the statewide Super Club of the Year were revealed up to round 15, leading the race for $5,000. In the big club division is Nightcliff, while in the small club division, Pint is in the driving seat to claim $1,500. Scores will now remain secret until the winners are announced at Nichols Medals Night, but remember what you do on and off the field could make a difference. Another thing happening at midday tomorrow at Gardens Oval will be the inaugural Legends match between Banks and Pint. After a few years of playing in their own intra-clubs Legends games, the two clubs got their heads together and will now play a game that will see some of the past greats of the TIFA and the NTFA pull the boots back on and have a run around and some fun with some of the modern NTFL players. We caught up with some of the fellas to hear how they're preparing and who fans can expect to see play. There's a bit of discussions early on about um, Banks always used to have their own Legends game and there was an idea about maybe combining a, a Pines versus Banks pre-existing game into a bit of a Pines versus Banks Legends game based on an old traditional rivalry that's been going on for probably close to 40 years. Lineup, we've got blokes that are, and we probably have half a dozen 200 game plus players for a couple of fly-ins that happened to be in town at the time. Uh, a few celebrities, big Ricky Nolan standing at full forward, hopefully. So, yeah, there's a, a bit of a mixture of um, old old Pines players and a few of the newer ones as well. The second year of the TIFA comp, which was, I think, 83, 84, and pretty much played every year since. Even played a few games last year over the Christmas break when everyone goes home to see Mum. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, stayed right out of it this year, so this will be the first game for the season. Uh, alongside with, uh, I haven't seen the team list yet, so uh, hopefully there's going to be people in there that I've played with over the years. Obviously some from the early days more than uh, the later ones. But, yeah. yeah, it's just in spirit of the game, it's just award to the opposition picks to the opposition best play for the opposition side. So you just keep the spirit of the game. And, yeah, scores don't count really, just as long as you beat them. <laughs> <laughs> we've been doing this game for seven years now, but just internally with ourselves. This year we've invited points in on it, so hopefully it'll be a ripper. It should be good old rivalry and uh, all the blokes we played foot against before playing again. I'm having, loving to get along Spuddy. He's a... Uh, He's beat me nearly every game we played against each other, so try and get one back, hopefully. Never know. Tom's going to play everyone at full forward. <laughs> Revolutionise the yeah, game. Great. Tom's got the better of us, yeah. so it'll just be full forwards. Yeah. Everyone will be happy. There Except won't, be, there won't be no 666. So. <laughs> <laughs> it all takes place before a top of the ladder clash in the men's division one, which Banks president Will Johnson told us about. Yeah, we really um, really have our work on our um, cut out for us this weekend. Pine are in great shape. They've, they've got some high profile players in their side as well. So um, we like playing here at Gardens Oval. It, it suits our structure really well. So um, hopefully it's a little bit overcast and we can move the ball around and um, yeah, kick a few goals. It was very close last time, a low scoring game. And you know over recent years, it's been much the same. So yeah, hopefully we can get, get the win this weekend. Yeah, this weekend we've got uh, Daniel Schultz, who uh, has been around the football club for a long time. He's coaching. Uh, and Ronnie White, who's uh, affectionately known as Ronnie Five Goals for some exploits in a grand final. Um, he, he's been one of the main organisers. So along with Lincoln Jenkin, who a lot of people would know around the place. So those three have been leading it together. And uh, familiar faces like Andrew Pope, uh, Trent Fowler, um, and then the, a few sort of more recent legends and Alex Kaithner and, and a couple of the other guys running around this weekend as well. You can't tip on this game, but don't forget, you can get your Premier League tips in before tonight's games. See tipping.aflnt.com.au to sign up. Now let's check out who was voted NTFL Play of the Round winner. When voting closed this morning, it was Harley Purr and Tata Mary's piece of magic to keep a loose ball alive near the boundary line, cleverly tapping it to his advantage before swinging around onto his right boot and curving it through for a goal that finished on top. Congratulations to Jolene Seddon, whose vote for Harley saw her pick up the fan prize of two grandstand tickets and a canteen voucher for the 2020 AFL game between the Gold Coast Suns and St Kilda. Well, that's a wrap for another Friday footy show. We hope you'll link up with this weekend to say no more to domestic, family and sexual violence, and we'll see you at the footy.